Keeper 9.3 test about a population mean. Alright, so just like last Keeper, we're doing um, significance tests. This time we're talking about uh, means or averages. So just like with our confidence intervals, we still have to check our conditions. Uh, random must be from a random sample. Uh, normal, we're checking that either the population is normal, we could check whether or not uh, n is greater than or equal to 30, or if none of those two satisfy, we can do a graphical analysis to show no major skewness or outliers. So we usually check like a dot plot, box and whiskers, or even a norm normal probability plot to make sure that the data set is not too far skewed or we don't see any crazy outliers. All right, and then lastly, we check independent. And again, we want to make sure the data is sampled with replacement, or we need to check to make sure it satisfies the 10% 10, 10 condition or 10% rule if it's, at, if it's sampled without replacement. All right, so just like before, we need to uh, calculate our test statistic and our p-value. Our test statistic for our one sample t-test for means is given by this formula. T equals X bar minus mu naught over S of X over the square root of N. Remember this X bar is from your sample. This mu naught is your null hypothesis. Um, S of X is your standard deviation of your sample. And square root of N, N would be your sample size. Um, remember that when you're looking at your T value, when we do this on the calculator, especially you have to remember your degrees of freedom um, N minus 1. All right, and remember this only works if your conditions are satisfied. You have to have a random sample. You're, it has to be um, approximately normal, and you want to check for independence. All right, just like before, if we have a two-sided te test about population means, it again correlates back to our confidence intervals. If we, um, if we reject our null hypothesis, then it will not be included in our confidence interval. But if we fail to reject, it will be included in that confidence interval. So it's almost like a check. And not only is it just like a check, but like if, say for instance, um, we found that it was not, like we um, rejected the null, so it was not included in our confidence interval. Um, well, if it's not included in our confidence interval, the, the test itself says, hey, it's not included, but the confidence interval will say it's not included, but here's where it should be included. So you kind of want to use the two together um, to get a better picture or a better story of what's going on. All right, we also have something called paired data, and we talked about this a while ago. We didn't really go into it in too much detail, um, but we have um, paired or matched paired data. Uh, basically, where we're doing a study that involves the same individual, like they get the same, um, they get treatment one and treatment two, or um, we just pair them up so that, so that two individuals, maybe it's not the same person, but we pair it so that two individuals are very, very similar, and we compare it that way. Uh, paired data is quite popular. Um, a lot of studies involve paired data because it it gives more... It gives more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It gives more information about whatever we're trying to study because we're able to compare it against something else. Um, so a paired test normally uses the difference. So it uses the difference between the two individuals or the difference between the two treatments. Um, so we call that mu of D. All right, so whenever we're doing a pair test, we're looking for the difference. So your null hypothesis for your pair test will always be different. I mean, sorry, will always be zero because we want to say there is no difference. So, you know, one treatment minus the other treatment, should be there should be no difference in the results. Um, and then your alternative hypothesis will go in whatever direction you feel like the difference may be. So again, when you calculate it out, um, we're gonna you would use a pair t test. Everything else is exactly the same. The only thing is again that your null hypothesis is zero, and then your alternative might be greater than zero or less than zero or does not equal zero. All right. So last thing we need to know about this keep this whole chapter really is just to make sure we're using our test wisely. Um, make sure that you're picking a good alpha level depending on what you're looking at, depending on what's important to you. You want to pick an alpha level that is going to be beneficial to your study. Um, remember, depending on whether you're um, 
whether you want to reduce your type 1 error or you want to reduce your type 2 error, um, you want to increase power, depending on what you want to do for the, your particular study, that's what's helping you to create a good um, alpha level. And then also remember that you want to have a good sample size because as the sample size gets larger, those little differences become more and more significant, the differences that you see between the groups, uh, especially if it's paired, uh, a pair test. Um, again, make sure that you're you're really picking a good p um, a good alpha level, um, and then remember also that this doesn't work if you had a bad study. Like if your if your design if your experiment was faulty to begin with, if you had bias, if you were just doing a whole bunch of nonsense in the actual design of the study, your um, results from your um, significance test will not be too significant. Um, it kind of be. Uh, really is just going to tell you some false information. So, I mean, you could still run the test if you want, but you have to just keep in mind that it really is not meaningful if the experiment was bad to begin with. All right, and then um, basically you also want to, after you run the test and you find, hey, I want to reject or I want to fail to reject, you want to make sure that you look into why that happened. Um, and also... Um, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, again, like you might find that there is a difference, but in your study, depending on what you're looking at, um, it, it might not mean too much. I mean, it, again, it just depends on the context, context that you're looking at. Don't like negate the context. The context will always help you to figure out whether or not, you know, the information that you're getting from the study is actually valid. So again, just don't don't just run a test and not really look at what you're actually studying. All right, that's it.